Section 3.5, cross product. If u equals u1, u2, u3, and v equals v1, v2, v3 are vectors in three space, then the cross product u cross v is the vector defined by this equation right over here. What we do is we take that u2, multiply it by v3, then subtract u3 times v2, etc. That gives you the first component, this gives you the second, this gives you the third of the cross product. Notice the cross product is a vector. It has three different components corresponding to three different components for u and for v. It's pretty hard to remember which one is multiplied by which one from each of the original components, so we can write this in determinant notation by the determinant of u2 v2, u3 v3, minus the determinant of u1 v1, u3 v3, u1 v1, u2 v2. And we'll see better ways or some other ways to remember the definition later on. As an example, let's find the cross product where u is 1, 2, minus 2, and v is 3, 0, 1. So we'll take u cross v equal to, I'll use the determinant notation, so 2 and then 0, because those are the second components of u and v. And then I'll need the third, so that'll be minus 2 and 1. So that determinant gives me the first component of the cross product. Then I'll take minus the determinant with their first components, 1 and 3, and then their third, minus 2 and 1. And lastly, the determinant with the first components, 1 and 3. And then the second one's 2 and 0. You have to be very careful to remember that minus for the second component of the cross product. So then this is equal to 2 minus 7 minus 6. Because notice 2 times 1 is just 2 minus 0. 1 minus, minus 2 times 3 is minus 7, etc. There are some relationships involving the cross product and dot product. So if we have u, v, and w as vectors in 3 space, then when we take the dot product of u, with u cross v, so this is the dot product of the vector u with the cross product of u and v, we get zero. In other words, u is perpendicular to its cross product. Also v, dotted with u cross v, is perpendicular to its dot product, this is to its cross product, because the dot product is zero. The length of u cross v squared is the length of u squared times v squared, minus the dot product. So that's how you can expand the cross the length of the cross product squared. Then u cross v cross w is u dotted with w times v minus u dotted with v times w. u cross v cross w is u dotted with w times v minus v dotted with w times u. So notice these guys are not the same. So in general, the cross product is not associative. Let's do an example that illustrates A and B. So we've got two vectors. Let's check that they are both orthogonal to the cross product. So what we'll do is uh, first let's take the cross product. U cross V. Uh, well, these are the same vectors that we just took the cross product of. So it's 2 minus 7 minus 6. So 2 minus 7 minus 6. And let's take the dot product. U dotted with this cross product. So that's 1 times 2 plus 2 times negative 7 plus negative 2 times negative 6, which is 0. So u is perpendicular to it. Let's look at v. So v dotted with u cross v. Well, that'll be 3 times 2 plus 0 times minus 7 plus 1 times minus 6, which is also 0.
here are some properties of the cross product. If u, v, and w are vectors in three space and k is any scalar, then u cross v is minus v cross u. So the cross product is almost commutative, but you can't just switch the order, you have to throw in a minus. We also have that u cross v plus w is u cross v plus u cross w. So there is distribu distribution over addition. u plus v crossed with w is u cross w plus v cross w. Great. Uh, scalar times the cross product is the same thing as a scalar times one of the vectors crossed with the other vector, which is the same thing as that vector crossed with the scalar times the other vector. So you can move the scalar into either u or v. The cross product of a vector in 0 is the same as 0 across with that uh, vector, which is just the 0 vector. And any vector crossed with itself is the 0 vector. How about we compute the cross product of the uh, vectors i and j? So i crossed with j is going to be the determinant uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, then minus 1, 0, 0, 0, and lastly 1, 0, 0, 1. Because remember i is 1, 0, 0, and j is 0, 1, 0. So this is just 0, 0, 1, and we take the determinants, which remember is k. Uh, as we've seen above over here, if we were to take i cross i, then that would have to be the 0 vector, any vector cross with itself. j cross j would also have to be the 0 vector, and k cross k would have to be the 0 vector since we saw that i cross j is equal to k then that means that uh, j cross i must be equal to minus k by this first property that we looked at. I'm not going to write it out but you could see pretty quickly that j crossed with k is going to end up equaling i, and thus k crossed with j will be minus i, and that k crossed with i will end up equaling j, and that i crossed with k would therefore have to be minus j. So notice you could kind of remember this by drawing a circle. And then if you put i here, j here, and uh, k here, then you go in this direction of the circle. If you take i cross with j, then you end up with k. If you take k cross with i, you get j. If you go backwards along the circle, then you get minus, etc. So. By the way, while we have i, j, and k here, notice we can pretty quickly illustrate that the cross product is not associative. If we take i crossed with uh, j crossed with j, then that'll equal i crossed with the zero vector, which is the zero vector. But notice if we were to take i crossed with j and then cross that with j, then we get k crossed with j, which is minus i. So they're not equal. So that implies that uh, i crossed with j crossed with j is not equal to i crossed with j, then crossed with j afterward. Not associative. And also while we're here, how about we talk a little bit about another way to define the dot pro the cross product in terms of a uh, determinant with uh, i, j, and k in it. We could uh, say it's the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix 
with i, j, and k in the top row. And then if uh, u1, u2, u3 are the components of u, and v1, v2, v3 are the components of v, we just put those in the second and third rows. Notice that'll be equal to u2, v2, u3, v3. We're going to take that determinant times i. We're just doing the cofactor expansion. Notice that agrees with that same first component. And the other determinants will agree with the other components. Remember that when we take the cofactors, when we do j, we're going to have to get the minus. So that agrees as well. Because it goes uh, plus, minus, plus. So we'll get uh, u1, v1, u3, v3 times j plus u1, v1, and uh, u2, v2 times k. And we'll use this formula fairly often. If u and v are vectors in three space, then u, the length of u cross v is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by u and v. How about we prove this quickly? Let's say uh, theta denotes the angle between u and v. So here's u, here's v, and here's theta. So let's look at the length of the cross product squared. Well, by the property we have from before, that's the length of u squared times length of v squared minus the dot product squared. But the dot product, as we've seen, is the length of u squared times length of v squared times cosine squared. So we'll factor out the length of u squared times length of v squared. So we'll get, when we pull it out, we get a 1 minus cosine squared, which is just sine squared. So let, assuming that um, theta is between 0 and pi, that follows that the sine of theta will have to be greater than or equal to 0. So we can just uh, take the square root of both sides. And we'll get that the length of u cross v is length of u times the length of v times sine theta. But the length of v times sine theta is the altitude of the parallelogram. That's the height. So that means that the uh, area of the parallelogram is given by the length of v sine theta times the base, which is just the length of u which is the cross product as we calculated. So the area of the parallelogram is the uh, length of the cross product. How about we find the area of the triangle determined by the points P1, P2, and P3 given? So first we need to kind of draw this, I think. That way we can see what's going on. So here's X. Here's z, and I'll put y over here. Let's say p1 is like somewhere over here. This could be 2, 2, 0 in the xy plane. And then it goes up to p2. We can call that minus 1. 0, 2, as we were given. And then, let's see if I can do P3. That was uh, 0, 4, 3. Mm, let's finish the parallelogram off. Okay, so basically what I gotta do is take the area of this parallelogram and then I'll cut it in half and I'll get the triangle. So to get the area of the parallelogram, I need to come up with a vector over here and a vector over here. That'll be my u and v. So for p1, p2, remember I can get a vector between those two points by subtracting. So I'll take minus one, minus, 2 
and I'll get minus 3. I'll get 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and then 2 minus 0 is just 2. For p1, p3, my other vector, I'll get minus 2, 2, 3 when I subtract them. Now that I have two vectors, I can take the cross product. I couldn't do it when I just had points. So p1, p2 crossed with p1, p3 will be, I'll use that formula that I had before with the determinant of uh, the matrix i, j, k, and then minus 3, minus 2, 2, minus 2, 2, 3, and that'll be the determinant minus 2, 2, 2, 3 times i, minus determinant minus 3, minus 2, 2, 3, j, plus the determinant minus 3, minus 2, minus 2, 2, k. Okay, so that simplifies out to minus 10, 5, minus 10, and then I can get the area by taking half of the area of the parallelogram, which is the length of that cross product I just calculated. And that was a P1, P3. So that's half of, well, if I take this square root plus this squared plus this squared and then take the square root, I should get 15. So it's just 15 over 2, 7.5. If u, v, and w are vectors in 3 space, then u dot v cross w is called the scalar triple product of u, v, and w. The scalar triple product u, v, and w can be calculated from the formula given by the determinant of the matrix that's formed by listing each of their components. So the first component on the first column, second component, second column, third component, third column, or if you want to think of it, all the components for u, all the components for v, all the components for w. This is kind of like how we computed the cross product, except that we put i, j, and k in that first row. So we just replace that with what we're dotting by. And this is, you can see this is true by just taking u dotted with the formula for v cross w, which is given by this just by definition or as we saw before. And then notice when we take an u and dot it with this thing, then that distributes each of the components of u to be multiplied by each of these determinants, which is literally like reverse cofactoring to get back to the determinant of the three by three. How about we do an example and uh, calculate the scalar triple product of the vectors that were given over here. So we'll take u dotted with v cross w, and that'll be the determinant of 3, 1, 0, minus 2, 4, 3, and then minus 5, 4, 2. And I'll take cofactoring along the first row, because why not? Although the first column is a 0, but eh, whatever. I'll take 3 times 4 minus 4, 3, 2, minus, minus 2 times 1, minus 4, 0, 2, plus minus 5 times determinant 1, 4, 0, 3. And I'll end up with 60 plus 4 minus 15, which is 49. The absolute value of the determinant with uh, u1, u2, v1, v2 is equal to the area of the parallelogram in two space determined by the vectors u and v. So that's pretty similar to what we had before when we had the uh, 
error of the parallelogram in three space. The absolute value of the determinant, this guy over here, is equal to the volume of the parallel pipette in three space determined by the vectors u, v, and w. So when we take the absolute value of a uh, two by two determinant, determined by two vectors that are the sides of the parallelogram, then we get the area of that parallelogram. And in three space, it's like a 3D parallelogram is a parallel pipe bed. It shouldn't be too surprising since this is uh, pretty similar to the formulas that we calculated earlier for the area of a parallelogram using the cross product in terms of determinants. How about we prove this real quick? So what we'll do is we'll take u and v as vectors in the xy plane of an xyz coordinate system. In other words, right over here. What we're doing is we're taking these uh, basically two-dimensional vectors and we're kind of making them 3D by throwing them in 3D space and just setting that third component to be zero. So we'll express them as u and v, third component zero, and let's take the uh, cross product. So what we'll do is um, just put i, j, k, but then that last column we have uh, two zeros in it. So that just gives us, well, the you can kind of uh, even imagine cofactoring off of this uh, last column. You notice you're only going to have k times this matrix over here, the determinant of that matrix over there, because the zeros are going to kill off everything else. So this is just the determinant of this thing times k, which is just the determinant of this thing times k. But remember, the length of uh, k is 1. The error of the parallelogram is the uh, length of the cross product, which is, in this case, is just going to be the length of this thing right over here. So that's just determinant of this thing times the length, the absolute value of this determinant times the length of k, which is 1. So it's just the absolute value of the determinant. How about we prove b by taking the base of the parallel pipette determined by u, v, and w to be the parallelogram determined by v and w. The area of the base is the length v cross w, and the height of the parallel pipette is the length of the orthogonal projection of u on v cross w. So that means that we could take the height h equal to the projection of u on v cross w, which is by definition the absolute value of the uh, scalar triple product u dot v cross w over the length of v cross w. Then the volume is area of the base times the height. So the area of the base is just v cross w times uh, the height projection given over here. And then notice the v cross w cancels. So we'll just get our numerator. But notice the absolute value of this thing is literally the absolute value of this determinant. That's the scalar triple product. So we proved that this thing actually is equal to the volume of the parallel pipe in three space. Not too surprising, like I mentioned. If the vectors u and v and w have the same initial point, then they lie in the same plane if and only if their scalar chart product is zero. That should make sense because if the scalar chart product is zero, then that means the volume of the parallel pipette is zero. In other words, it's completely flat.